Welcome to Hope Today. We are so glad you joined us. I'm your host, Amanda Brocker, along with J. Anthony Gilbert. And we know that today you are going to receive so much hope. We're going to be talking about potential, Pastor J. We are. I'm really excited about that. In just a moment, we are going to be talking about your potential. And are you currently living out your full potential? Or do you feel like something's missing in your life? We're going to be joined by Pastor Troy Gramling. He's going to share how you can unlock your full potential and live your best life now. I'm really excited about that because you know what? Every one of us have a form of potential within us. And uh, to be able to unlock that and to walk it out, oh my gosh, it's the greatest feeling. Like right now, we're living in part of our potential. Right. I mean, there's nothing better than living out your potential because if you're doing what God's called you to do, you never work a day in your life. That's right. You can enjoy the That's journey. Right. And God wants you to enjoy the journey. So he desires for you to know what giftings he's given you and that you can walk out that purpose. You know, in today's society, I feel like because we look all around us, so many people comparing themselves to other people and they're missing out on what God has for them. You know, if my eyes are not on the Lord, I cannot do what he's asked me to do. If my eyes are on you and Tiffany and what you're doing, you know, I can't do what God's called That's Amanda right. Brocker to do. So it's so important for our eyes to be on Jesus. We encourage you today with that hope that maybe you've had that like just a lowliness, like feeling I'm not worthy. God wouldn't pick me to be on his team. Well, today you're going to know you are picked. There's no accident. God created you with intention and with purpose. There's no one he didn't pick, Pastor Jay. That's right. As a matter of fact, before, the Bible says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you, right. approved you, and ordained you to be a prophet to the nation. So before mama and daddy ever got together, God already knew who you were, what your purpose was going to be, and then he found a dirt house, which is this body, yeah. to put us in to be able to do that. If there's one thing in particular about your purpose, I know I'm yeah. kind of throwing a curveball at you right there now. Right. One thing in particular <laughs> that you would say is the most important thing you've understood about your purpose, what would you say that is? That I see maybe people that I felt other people don't see. Mm. and I care to minister to them. I think it's what was appealing about when I learned about those words that Miss Norma said, that everybody ought to know who Jesus is, but it was out of her experience of walking downtown Pittsburgh and seeing the hurt in people's eyes that she cared to do something about it. She felt an unction from the Holy Spirit. So I definitely, I feel like that's a niche, like maybe not yeah. everybody has that, but I strongly feel it. I feel compelled by the spirit, like I can't not do something. Well, I've always seen that with you as well. You have that ability to mm -hmm. really have a compassion for people, to see things in people. You've always been so moving. I don't know if y'all have realized that when she's on the air, she's one of the most relatable people that um, I have ever seen on air. And you do such a great job with that. Well, thank you, Pastor Jay. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Well, listen, we're going to go a little bit deeper here right now into this thing called purpose and into this thing uh, of your passion and what God's put inside of you. And we've got a phenomenal man of God whose name is Pastor Troy Gramling. He's our next guest and him and his wife, Steph, they lead what's called Potential Church in South Florida. Their vision is fueled by a passion and burden to partner with people to reach their God-given potential and impact the world for good. Pastor Troy joins us now to share how you can reach your full potential and become the masterpiece you were created to be. Pastor Troy, welcome to Hope Today. Ah, oh, it's such an honor to be here. Uh, thanks so much for the opportunity. Listen, man, you're looking good on that set, man. I mean, I got to get one of those at home. I mean, uh, what's that behind you? What's that little sign that you got going on? Is that just, uh, does that have any significance or is it just sexy? Yeah, it's just sec. Actually, it's my name. Uh, the team here came up. That's that's my logo. So uh, I'm I'm real professional. <laughs> tell, well, you know, tell us a little bit about that then. I mean, you said that's your logo and all that. Tell uh -huh. us a little bit about what, what does that mean behind you? Well, it's a T and a G. It's my name. And you wow. see the T? You see the G? And, yeah, 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 yeah. That is we have really a cool. Creative I love team it, man. here that partnered. So we partnered together to come up with that. So. That is so cool. Well, listen, tell us about Potential Church and uh, what's happening there. And uh, just for the people that have never seen you before, tell us a little bit about how God bursted that in your spirit and how you guys got to where you are today. 
Yeah, we've been here in South Florida is where uh, the teaching campus is, is located. And we've been here for 24 years. Our kids have grown up here. But originally, we came from Arkansas. And uh, we actually uh, started a church there. And we were there for a season. And then uh, through some challenges, as we kind of discovered what God has for us, we, we ended up here and uh, have really connected to the environment, to the people, uh, love living here. And, and it's an incredible opportunity to partner uh, with folks. It's a very unchurched, very secular environment here. So uh, there are lots of folks to reach with the, the good news for sure. But uh, we truly enjoyed being here and watching our kids grow up. They're part of the ministry as well now. And uh, to me, that, I guess, Probably the thing I'm most proud of is to see them discover their potential and, and search that out for themselves. Let's talk a little bit about that, Pastor Troy, uh, potential. You know, a lot of times God allows us to walk through things in our wilderness that prepares us for our public ministry, for our public calling. Did you ever battle with finding your potential, understanding your purpose? Uh, did you ever have any of those issues like Moses might have had? Yeah, I, I think, you know, the the biggest challenge is always that first step to believe that there's a true uh, sense of significance to your life. And for me, you know, I, had play, I grew up playing basketball. I played basketball in college, played a little bit overseas. And so I planned on being a coach. That's what I went to school for. That's what the plan. My wife is in education. Her father's a superintendent. Her grandfather's a superintendent. So, I mean, that was set up. That's the way it was supposed to go. And then one weekend, we were attending a little country church. Finch Baptist Church was the name of it. And the preacher was looking for somebody to teach Sunday school for the youth. And nobody volunteered. My wife and I didn't know how to do it, but we said, we'll do it. And this was a long time ago. So it's back when they had, you know, Christian bookstores. We went to the Christian bookstore and we got a little workbook on what you're supposed to do. And we began that journey. And as we were teaching that, those 10 or 12 kids, I just sensed God doing something in my heart. And, uh, and I remember the conversation that Steph and I had that I feel God's nudging uh, my heart towards ministry and talking to her about that as opposed to teaching and, and, and coaching. And so, you know, that discovery process of what it is, how God uses who we are, but maybe in a different way than we thought and trusting him enough to follow that because I didn't, you know, my mom took us to church when we were little and I had trusted Christ, of course. And, but I really didn't know much about ministry, what it took, what it was, how it operated. People would say, so you're gonna be a preacher? And I'm like, well, I, I don't know. I just sense God nudging my heart. So I, I think a lot of folks go through that. And sometimes I allow that to discourage them. You know, we like to have, we like to know what we're doing, where we're going. And, and uh, sometimes God just takes us one step at a time. Did you have any areas in your world where it got scary? Because, you know, a lot of times when we're taking those steps to launch out that first step, you know, God doesn't always give you the whole kit and caboodle the moment that you launch out. You may know somewhere along the line you're going to do something in ministry, but taking those first few steps, uh, what are some faith steps you had to take that uh, may have freaked you out a little bit along the way? Yeah, the, especially early on. You know, we started out in that little country church, and, you know, there's lots of politics. You know, people bring their peopleness to church just like they do everywhere else, and I didn't realize that, you know, when I first started uh, in, in ministry, but... Um, through some real challenges, we ended up starting a church. And in our little, our little town, you know, people talked about starting a church and how we needed churches. And, but when we actually stepped out to start with 11 people in our living room, there wasn't a ton of people at first who wanted to jump in and be a part of it. And so uh, that was a real, uh, you know, kind of trusting God and just doing what um, I, I knew to do. There wasn't a lot of books. There wasn't a lot of resources at the time. I mean, there's the scripture and then there's those who have gone before you. Um, and that was an incredibly challenging time. And then seeing God bless that and uh, the opportunity to see that grow. And then we, the, our denomination asked us to go to Little Rock, which was the capital of Arkansas. And I was excited, you know, I wanted to be where there was traffic. I wanted to be where there was excitement. I wanted to be where things were happening. Moved our family, our kids got into brand new school. And one day I got a call from the denominational guy after meeting, you know, with the different people. And uh, he said, this is a hot potato because stylistically, I guess it was a little different maybe than what they were used to. And he said, I'm gonna drop it. And all of a sudden, all the financing that we were gonna have to start this there in the uh, capital was gone. You know, as a man feeling the responsibility for my family, I've, 
uh, felt like a failure. Uh, it was an incredibly, um, probably one of the most challenging times in my life to think, oh, what am I going to do? How do I move forward? And um, what happened? You know, why did, I mean, we stepped out in faith. We moved to a new city. The kids went to a new school. I got a part-time job. My wife got a new job. We, all these things thinking we're doing what God wants. And then all of a sudden the rug just gets pulled out from underneath us. And uh, so, so that was, uh, that was the beginning of a great opportunity, but it didn't feel like it in that moment for sure. Wow. Such just a powerful testimony to where you're at today and how the Lord, when we put our trust in him. But talk to us about that because, you know, there's disappointments we have, you know, uh, insecurities we develop. How important was it your view of your heavenly father and what can we glean from that view? Yeah, so many times, you know, we take the picture of our earthly father and then we put that on God. And uh, depending on what that circumstance and that environment is, um, then we respond, you know, whether that's fearful, uh, whether that's I got to somehow impress him, you know, by being winning, you know, crossing the finish line, hitting the winning bucket, those kind of things. And we get a real wrong perspective of who, who God is, you know, and, uh, you know, our heavenly father is not a reflection of our earthly father. He's the perfection of our earthly father. You know, when we all have those dreams, what if my dad would have showed up? What if my dad would have had one of those conversations on the bed about life? What if my dad would have stepped in and protected me? And I think that's the beginning process of realizing who our heavenly father really is and being able to embrace uh, embrace that and know that he then is walking with you no matter where you find yourself and has um, a great desire for you uh, into the future. Uh, because I think it's always important. I was listening to Urban McManus a few weeks ago and he was talking about how before we were visible, we were invisible, you know, in the sense that we were in the heart and mind of God, as you guys were talking a little bit earlier. And to me, that's just incredibly powerful to know I'm intentional, you know, and, and uh, my heavenly father created me intentionally. He didn't let, you know, I wasn't born and then him go like, ah, oh, what in the world am I going to do with this one? You know, let's figure something out. No, no, he made me the way that I am on purpose to do something of significance. And, and when I get discouraged, when we go through what we did in Arkansas and with, you know, those who are watching and listening today, I'm sure go through those difficult times. It's, you are intentional and it's important to, to remember that, you know, that uh, in, the, in the book, we talk about the roundabout way. God took Moses the roundabout way. God doesn't always take us the fastest route. That's right. You know, because he, he doesn't want us just to cross the finish line. He wants us to have a sense of peace and joy as we live out the destiny that we were created for. Well, you know, Pastor Troy, as you were talking before, you said the rug got pulled out from under you and going along with what Amanda just mentioned about knowing God as your heavenly father and all of that. How did the father step in when the rug was pulled out, you're on your way to reaching your potential. What happened in the rest of that story? I mean, you said the rug got pulled out. You're wondering what happened, what's going on here. What did God do for you to help unlock that potential? It was pretty cool. I called the pastor who was pastoring the church I'm at today. And because I had met him, he was teaching a conference in Little Rock. This is so cool the way God works. He was teaching a conference and there was a breakout and I had taken 10 or 12 people from the church we had started. And we we're going to the breakout and nothing was set up. And so I grabbed those 12 guys and we set up all the chairs and got it ready. And as a result, then the pastor who was here, then he asked us, the guy who was teaching the breakout, he asked us to lunch. So I got to know him. And as a result of getting to know him, he was doing a lot at the time out in California at Saddleback and he invited me out there a few times. So the whole reason I even knew uh, Pastor Dan was his name, uh, the only reason I knew him is because of that moment, that act of service. Right. And then so I called him. I said, you know, anybody in Little Rock that might uh, be able to help us? Because I still felt, you know, this is where God brought us. We're here. And he said, N you know, not really, but that they were looking for a young adult pastor. And I was a young adult at the time. And I told my wife, Steph, and she's like, I'm not moving to South Florida. All my family's in Arkansas. She said, but, you know, it's a great place to visit. So we flew down here and then we really sensed that this is where God wanted us to come. And we came to do a young adult service. There wasn't a lot of young adults though. So it was uh, really what I was doing is um, the parking lot. <laughs> On the weekend, I didn't really have anything to do. And so I would help the cars park in the parking lot. Little did I know a year and a half later that Pastor Dan, he had written a book and he was kind of traveling around teaching churches how to transition. 
and he transitioned out. And in doing so, he handed me the baton. And so I went literally from helping people find the parking spot to being the lead pastor, you know, here. Uh, and uh, so it was, it's been an incredible, incredible journey. But I, I, I think that it's those challenging times that we go through that, you know, give you the confidence. I don't think I would have the, the ability to persevere in this environment down here had I not gone through the challenges that I had gone through and see my Heavenly Father is there and ready to step in. So do you think that in the middle of all the, the journeys, the difficulties, the hardships, that God, not only does he unlock the potential within you, but he builds your character and all the different things coming. I love the story that you're sharing. I mean, a lot of times there could be people watching right now, Pastor, that they got the rug pulled out from under them and they don't realize that God is actually setting them up in order to get pushed into their God-given potential. To that, you say what? I say it's the small decisions. You know, that decision to volunteer to teach uh, youth changed my life from being a coach to being in ministry. That decision to move to South Florida, um, to that decision to set up those chairs, right? Mm -hmm. Volunteering to teach Sunday school is what they called it. And then just stepping up and setting up chairs. Neither one of those seemed like big decisions. Those two decisions impacted my life maybe more than any big decision that I've made. And so I just encourage anybody who's going through that difficult time and that challenging time, don't worry so much about the finish line, just take the next step. Just be obedient in the next step and you never know exactly where it's gonna lead. Amen. Would you mind just taking a moment here and just praying over, because I do believe that there are many viewers out there that uh, they, they don't see the potential in themselves, and the Holy Spirit is able, if they're willing, you know, to lay down. And I love that God opened the door of your potential through your serving Him. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you walked in a humility. And so I, I think that's beautiful. Like the, the whole story is beautiful. That to me is God. But would you mind praying over our viewing audience for that one that's out there today that just needs that encouragement? Yeah, I'd be honored to. Amen. Father, I thank you so much for everyone who is uh, watching today. And I know that some are going, right, they're in the middle of it and they're struggling and they're wondering where you are and they're wondering why this has happened. And yet you're right there with them. And just as you took the Israelites the roundabout way, just as you've taken me and my wife, Steph, the roundabout way, God, that you are setting them up. You are propelling them into their destiny. And so I just pray that you would give them the strength to continue to persevere. Yes, God. God, to take just that next step, to see you in what they're wrestling with. Yes. And we just commit that we will give you all the honor and all the glory. Thank you that you have intentionally created us to do something of significance. And we ask it all in Jesus' name, amen. amen, amen. Amen. Pastor Troy, I want you to take just a quick minute here. We've been talking about potential and you've been sharing your story. So that makes you definitely a fit person to write your latest book here, Potential, The Uncontainable Power of God Within You. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to go get that. But Pastor Troy, take a minute for somebody that's watching, needs to get their hand on this book. How will this book help them to unlock the potential and get to where God has called them to be just like he did it for you? Yeah, you know, we all need a, a path. We all need a map. And I think one of the greatest uh, paths that God gives us is the story of Moses. They go from being enslaved to the promised land. And that's the journey that we're all on. And so what I do in the book is that we learn from Moses. I take some of the things that I've experienced in my own life, and, and then we walk down that journey. We talk about uh, the challenges that we face, who needs to go on the journey, what do we need to learn about ourselves, and ultimately, at the end, we need to have a dream that's bigger than just our life. You know, Moses raised up Joshua. Joshua, something happened and he didn't do as good a job as Moses. So there's a lot that we can learn about our own journey and uh, just dream big dreams and see what God does along the way. Pastor Troy, thank you so much. We appreciate you. We pray God's blessing upon Potential Church and uh, thank you for stopping by here on Hope Today. Oh, it's a real honor and we appreciate all you guys do. Amen. Well, listen, we want to minister to you now because we believe there's potential within you. So, so stay tuned because we're going to be right back after this message.
The barriers that stand between you and a blessed life may feel insurmountable, but Dr. Robert Jeffers assures you they can be overcome. This month, when you give your most generous gift to Cornerstone Television, we'll send you Dr. Jeffers' new book, Invincible, Conquering the Mountains that Separate You from the Blessed Life. Offering biblical insight and practical tools, he explains how you can conquer the hindrances of doubt, guilt, anxiety, discouragement, fear, and bitterness through prayer and faith in a God whose strength can move mountains. Request your copy when you support the gospel ministry of Cornerstone Television. Your generosity will evangelize the lost, encourage believers, provide excellent Bible teaching, and so much more. Call us today and become invincible, conquering the mountains that separate you from the blessed life. Call 888-665-4483 or give online at ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for giving. I just love the content of that interview and how God, when we look to him, he truly did the impossible in Pastor Troy's life. But let's go to God's word. And it says in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And I just, I love that scripture, Pastor Jay, and the ones following it really encouraged the Israelites to seek God. Yeah. Seek God, because when you seek him, you'll find him, and his plan then is what will unfold in your life. Amen. We know as Pastor Troy was talking, he talked about, you know, on the way to reaching your potential, mm -hmm. a lot of times there's roadblocks right. and things that we hit in our life. Mm -hmm. The rug gets pulled off from us. You think you're going to be at this job and then you lose the job or you thought this relationship is going to be the one and that doesn't work out. And right. people have to understand that scripture there, God is telling them, I'm about to send you 70 years into slavery, but I know the thoughts and the plans that I have towards you. So you have to understand that all things work together. You know, a lot of times in our life, Amanda, when we get the rug pulled out, I have seen this in my own life. I am here today partially because a door shut that I thought would have remained open and God said, shut that door. And I was like, what am I gonna do? Where am I gonna go? I had no idea it was pushing me mm -hmm. into my purpose that I could be sitting here with you today. So God knows the thoughts and the plans that he has, right. even when it doesn't look like it, even when it doesn't feel like it, he has another door and I'm sitting here today as a result of one door shutting and God opening up another. That's right, amen. And I think it's important for us to look at the people around us as leaders. I, yeah. I just, I really believe that God wants us to see that in people. And I, I, I don't know, for, for sake of a better word, I don't know how else to say it, but like a holy demand that through the unction of the Holy Spirit, you see something in someone by because you're looking through God's eyes and you begin to pull that out of them. Like, I feel like Cornerstone did that for me. Yeah, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like sit in front of a TV and what? Something's gonna come out of my mouth, Lord help it. You know, but there are, uh, the giftings of God within, and it takes the people of God around you to pull those gifts. And I, what a treasure that is. So we're not up here like, oh, look at me, look what I've done, you know, Pittsburgh Leadership Foundation. No, I've found a rock that is higher than I. I and you're inviting the people around you, no matter how big a platform God gives you, to look to this rock that is higher than I, because he's the one who never fails. He's the one who has amazing things for your life and put your trust in him and so I just I believe that we need to do that for one another to be godly brothers and sisters to one another to see that potential and make room for it like Pastor Dan did for Troy yeah. it was like he saw that well you know I believe we're in a day and hour too Amanda that we take a look at all these different nationally ministers that nationally known ministers that are struggling you're seeing a lot of different people that their platforms being removed and people are wondering what that's all about let me tell you this in order to reap the harvest you are necessary. And going with what Amanda just mentioned, we're even here right now as your brother and sister in Christ to put a demand upon your potential. That's why you need to get a hold of the book. That's why you're watching right now is because you have to get off of the front row and get onto the front lines. God wants you to enlist. He's got potential. You stop looking to the pastor. Stop looking to the man of God saying, well, they'll do it. They'll do it. They'll do it. No, God is calling you God wants you to unlock your potential. And sometimes that happens. And on our way to getting potential, those relationships come into our life. Those men and women of God that see something yes. with us and they disciple us. 
That's the truth. And thinking about that, you know, Moses was brought up in the book, but he literally invited Joshua into the tent of meeting. Yeah. Like Joshua got to experience because Moses allowed that to happen. So I believe those of us that are already in a leadership position, there is much importance that we invite those that the Lord is calling into the tent of meeting, into bring them along for ministry. We love taking people yeah. to the streets. We mm -hmm. love inviting people to the table because we need to learn how to engage in conversation with one another and help people see God in that. It doesn't have to be an awkward and it, it is for our flesh sometimes uncomfortable having a God conversation. But the reality is begin to share your testimony. Let others see it's not about you. It's about him, what he brought me through. Amen. This is where I am today. This is where I was. There is such power in your own testimony when you share it and then give a moment for that other individual, the Joshua in your life, What's your testimony? Allow them to start to get comfortable sharing their own testimony. That is our God story. It's amazing what God will do and the conversations and how it will lead because people have questions. They're watching our lives, but how did that happen? Then they wanna know and it's the open door to share with them about Jesus. Amen. He is the way. And just real quickly, you know, as you're talking, I believe that there's people watching right now that you're a Moses and God is getting ready to bring Joshua's into your life. And there's some of you that are Joshua's and you don't have a Moses. Get ready because God's getting ready to send new people into your world that is going to instruct you, that, is go that you're going to instruct, and God's gonna bring these new relationships to take you to your next dimension. So get ready because there's doors that are about to open for you. And even while I'm sharing this, you feel such an impression within your heart because you know that there's somebody you need to pour into, but then there's also that there's people that need to pour into you. So I believe that God's gonna bring those discipleship relationships. Amen. Let Amen. it be so. Amen. What a great program. It is good. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we get to do this. It is such a great time to be with you and to have all of you here with us as well. We are so thankful because God has great potential inside of you. This is your time to rise up and unlock the power that is within you. Go get him today because God is with you and your best is yet to come. <laughs>